Welcome back to the sweatshop. In today's video, we're going to be working on this 2009 Subaru Forester. What we're doing in today's video is we are going to be replacing the center drive shaft. It's not the most challenging thing to do in the world, but it can be if you're doing it on the floor. And if you're in the rust belt, of course, you have that added pleasure of dealing with all the rust and particles falling into your face. So if you're willing to deal with all that, let's jump into the video and show you what to look for as well as what to do. That being said, if you've watched my videos in the past, you know that I will be giving you the torque specs for what we're doing i will also be showing you how to do it and of course before we get started with today's video do me a big favor hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss any of my new videos put this thing up in the air make sure if you're going to do it in the driveway you employ the use of jack stands what we're looking at of course is the drive shaft this is the back portion towards the differential why we are replacing our dry shaft is you can see that play there. I don't know what symptoms the customer is experiencing because I can't remember what she had said, but this thing is making some weird noises essentially when you drive. This guy here is always at a bit of an angle. A one to three degree angle is what usually these joints sit at. And as it rotates, it will squeak. And you can see there that this thing is squeaking because all that rust dust that is coming out of the U-joint. It also has play, which is not very good for high speed prolonged driving so if you're going on long trips on the highway well this guy's going to heat up with the constant agitation of the u-joint which is no good and it can potentially let go of course it has to get much much worse than this to get to that point but you obviously don't want it to get to that point now on the other side you have a u-joint that has a little bit of play for this particular shaft but not necessarily something that i'd be replacing it for when you see that rust dust forming that means this joint hair is completely dry there is nothing in the way of lubrication and that thing can potentially catastrophically fail so that is primarily why we are replacing this dry shaft and that weird irritating noise that she had in the winter time which i didn't hear when i backed the car up today that was a lot my fucking lungs are you know anyhow i'm going to talk you through what to look for when we take this thing off meanwhile you're going to get an offset wrench or a 12 mil wrench and crack these guys loose and get a pry bar to stick between the u-joint grab this guy here stick it through and crack it open yeah uh, if you're in the rust belt in my experience these guys have always come apart but it can be a bit traumatizing um, make sure you leave the car in neutral otherwise you will not be able to rotate this thing and uh, well you're gonna be pretty irritated so yeah yeah Now, with them all loose, you can get just an open end wrench and help yourself with getting those bolts off really quickly. Yeah, the open end works a lot faster than the box end. You can spray a little bit of WD-40 to make this process go a little bit faster, but hey, whatever. Make sure you keep it together and do not lose that washer. There's that piece of crap compressor. Put your bolts together like this and put them off in a safe place. Do not lose them. I'm going to go finish the rest of these bolts and I will be back. With all your bolts separated, all you're going to do is just take a pry bar and pry in any little section here. And this guy should drop free relatively easily. Okay, we got a little bit of rust tight fighting us here, but it's okay. Mother, come on, man. Oh, okay, there's a lot of rust type then. Damn it. There we go. That guy separated. Let it rest on your exhaust. All right, now what we're looking at here is a potential for issues that tissues just won't solve. Essentially, whenever doing a drive shaft, most times it is recommended that you move the exhaust. 
Except, well, we're not in Florida or California. And our exhaust looks like this. This is the flange. And this is the spring and bolt and whatnot. And it looks pretty rusty, so I'm explaining it to you. But anyhow, you get the point. It looks like complete dog shit. And if we try to take that apart, it's going to smear all over the place in rust particles like dog shit would. So... Don't touch it, whatever you do. Most times I can slip the shaft out through the back over the exhaust without putting a hole in it. It saves you time and money and the customer if you're a technician working on the car. Our next step is to get the shield off, which is held on by four beautiful 12 mils. Of course, the rust is a problem, so get an impact gun and pray to God they come out and they don't break. That's fun. That's tall. That's three. Uh, sometimes you gotta confuse it by going the other way. Hopefully this one comes out. Thank you, God. It's just one less bullshit I gotta deal with, you know? Saves me time and the customer money. Now, all you gotta do is slowly slide this guy out without deforming the hell out of it. Like so. Now we can see our wonderful hanger up top here. We are looking at our wonderful hanger bearing. What we're going to do now is take those two 14 mils out. You will need to treat those bolts the same way you treated the exhaust bolts. Uh, the exhaust shield bolts, that is. You don't want them to just, uh, well, you don't want them to break because that would really, really suck. The exhaust shield you can get past and live without, but you can't live without a hanger bearing bolt. Very rare, haven't had any of them break, only one, so it can happen. All right, we're good to go on that one. Now support the shaft. You can slowly let it down. Oh, that guy's pretty knack. Yeah, that's bad. Wow, it didn't even want to come down. That's how bad the other joint is in the front. That's never a good sign. So we'll experiment uh, or we'll explore that later on. Okay, so we are obviously looking at the other end of our dry shaft. The most important step here is to make sure you don't get all kinds of oil falling onto your exhaust because it will burn off and drive you and your customer a little bit crazy. Also, it'll probably run off of that rag onto the floor. So place a drain bucket in the appropriate position. The last time I did one of these, I think the last time I did one of these is with my buddy Christian. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, I still missed the uh, drain pan and got the floor so make sure you place it appropriately Christian if you're watching this one you will know exactly what I'm talking about anyhow go ahead and ease your shaft out nice and slow you got to get it up just a bit so that you can slip it past the diff oh this is gonna be a pain in the ass I might have to lower this wonderful exhaust just a bit. Just pull down on the exhaust just a little bit. Be very gentle. What we're going to do is basically slide it back enough to get the front portion out. Once we get the front portion out, I'm going to lower this side and pull the shaft out through the front. Yeah! My fucking hanger bearing. My fucking finger, bro. Ah, damn. All right, anyhow, we got the shaft out. Now all we gotta do is drag it through the front. So, yeah, let's, let's do that. Yeah. Oh. 
it's very awkward to do with the camera in the way. All right, there you go. The car just gave birth to a goddamn drive shaft. Now we gotta walk over to our bench, compare it, and make sure we're all good. Wow, that's pretty stiff. Okay, so when you have your drive shaft on the bench, this should not happen. You can see here, this is way too loose. You want it to have some rigidity, although you don't want it to be too rigid. If you have a brand new shaft, it should be by a reputable rebuilder. Don't skimp. Don't get something that's not really of good quality because you'll end up not happy. With your new shaft, what you're going to do is take your old shaft, compress it. So you're going to stand it up on the floor and then you're going to make sure you push it down so that this section here is completely compressed. You can see that play. It is meant to be there, but you measure the length of the shaft based on this being compressed. That being said, you also want to spin your hanger bearing. A little bit of noise if it's a used shaft is okay. No noise. It should be nice and silent if it's a brand new shaft. Now on this shaft here, on this end, this is our old one here and this one's just way too tight like we have a little bit of play area there where it's okay but it's way too tight uh, you should be able to still move this that means that there's enough lubricity and not a edge or ridge inside of the joint which is good you don't want any real edging now on this side here you can see i can move it relatively easy there's not too much of a binding or sort of any sort of stiffness like this one has. Although there is a little bit of an edge with a U shaft, it should not be nearly as bad as this thing. Now, that being said, this thing does have 300 plus thousand kilometers on it. So it is a tired old shaft. There's nothing wrong with that. This one has about 200,000. So, so it should give the customer all the life that she needs. And well, hopefully this is the only shaft she'll ever need. Now let's go ahead, put it into the car. If you have compared your shaft and made sure it's all the same, there's only a few things to do. Make sure both ends are nice and clean you're going to make sure there's no debris on this end before you put it in and then the same on this end you want to make sure that all that rust is gone if it's surface rust whatever just make sure you brush it off and then do the same thing on the diff side favorite choice of tool to take care of that task wire wheel <laughs> There you go that is success you want the same thing on the other side you can put a very thin layer of grease here just to prevent it from rusting and you are good to go that is the result you should end up with if you put some grease on it you can also put some grease in there but whatever not really not really important okay let's go ahead and shove this thing back into the car grab your shaft with both hands and insert it into the car you're gonna slide it in as gently as possible because if you put it in too quickly well no one's happy with that <laughs> Slide that hanger bearing in, get the shaft to go past. Okay, now just take a break because god damn it, that was a pain in the ass. Well, it's easier if the camera's not in the way, but anyhow, whatever, damn it. You're gonna grab this side of the shaft, you're gonna slowly inch it toward the back of the transmission. If the rest of it would cooperate. There we go. Oh, yeah. Just put it in. Make sure you do not collide with the seal. It does not like that type of action. It will leak and you will cry. With your shaft in place, make sure the back flange is clearing. And now, we will go ahead and bolt up the rear shaft. Now we'll go ahead and bolt up the rear flange to the diff. All right, you can see the wonderful job I have done here. Basically, we just cleared off the portion where our shaft is going to sit. You do not need to clear off the excessive rust where it is exposed as long as it doesn't hinder how your shaft sits on the diff flange. These two flanges have to be flat. If they're not, you'll overwork this joint and kill it prematurely. So take the time to clean it up. Of course, employ the use of some white lithium grease or some grease, whatever it is, just to slow it down from rusting. You will see there is a difference difference between the two sides here of the shaft. Make sure you line it up properly. Do not line it up the opposite way. It will not be good for you long term. I'm not sure if it actually bolts up, but like I say, if it doesn't sit flat, you're not going to be happy. Okay, slide in the bolt. 
and thread it up as snugly as you can by hand. Do not tighten it because if you try to adjust it with a tight bolt, well, you'll soon, you'll soon find out how much fun that can be. Also remember the washer is on the side of the nut. Um, haven't seen anybody yet screw that up, but yeah, never say never, right? Special people everywhere. Slide that guy in, bolt it on up. Just remember, if we can do it here, you guys can do it as well. You just gotta pay attention, man. Get damn, damn it, damn it, damn it, get on the, yes. And now let's get our last bolt in there. Thought it was my joint, but I just realized because I'm stupid that it's loose, so of course it's gonna make noise. Anyhow, I'm gonna edit that out. Last bolt, and that pile of junk compressor has come on, which means I'm gonna be shutting the video down soon because it's a real pain in the ass to go ahead and edit that shit out. All right, I shall be back. All right, now has come the time for us to go ahead and torque them. I'll tell you right now, I never torque these. I always just tighten them up by hand, but I do suggest that you torque them at home because, well, my hands are, well, they're pretty used to what 20 foot pounds feels like or 30 foot pounds. So I'm confident in my hands ability to take care of this job. What I would suggest is that you get a crow's foot that will fit on this thing. I don't actually have one and that's why I don't torque it. Our next step is to go ahead, tighten these guys up. Make sure you set your torque wrench to 23 foot pounds or 31 Newton meters. You'll need a specialty crow's foot to fit in here. If you don't have one, it's okay. You can do it by hand just don't over torque it all right last bolt remember righty tighty not what I just did I don't know if I mentioned it but don't forget to anti-seize the bolts all right, we are done. Double check this last one. And we are good to go. Yes, let's move to the center. All right, we can now go ahead and put these bolts in. As you can see there, they're nice and anti-seize. Make sure you do the same to yours. Tap the holes if need be. If your bolts came out with quite a bit of force or needed quite a bit of force to come out, make sure you tap them because you don't want them to gall up on the way back in. Don't drop the bolt like I did. All right. Make sure those guys are caught there, then get your gun and run them up. Set your torque wrench to 38 foot pounds or 52 newton meters. Of course, make sure there's no residue in this area. Wipe up any if there is, remove the rag, and now grab your exhaust shield and slide it into place. Of course, make sure you anti-seize your bolts. Don't forget to, otherwise they'll probably break the next time you have to touch them. In case you're wondering, the torque spec for the shield is 13 foot pounds or 18 newton meters. Of course, with my gun, they're both over torqued, but whatever. The one front one wasn't. Well, that's pretty much all she wrote for this one. The only thing left to do now is to take this thing for a test drive and make sure everything is well in Subaru land. Provided you don't have any noises, shakes, or weird rattles, you're good to go. Hopefully you found the video entertaining as well as informative. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And as always, thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one.
In today's video, we're going to be replacing the center drive shaft. This is a common problem on the Subarus. A lot of times you will hear a bit of a clunking noise when you put it into gear or a vibration will annoy the hell out of you. And that will, I got to say some more shit before I actually fucking do this. Can be a bit challenging. It's motherfucking hoist. Like, come on, man. Damn. This thing was making some, oh, fuck. The Uncle Burger's trying to come out my stomach. <laughs> That shit, man. Ow. There's that piece of shit compressor. Do you pick it up? All the time, it's the worst thing ever. Oh shit. I got a sneeze coming on. It's coming, you two. Hold on. <laughs> oh fuck. Thank you. I think the last time I actually did one of these was with 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 uh with, 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 with. Christian if you're watching that one. Uh yeah, if we're gonna have to <laughs> Do they have to lower this shit? I don't think so. Wow, that was pretty stiff. Uh, n uh. <clears throat> Anyhow, set your torque wrench to 23 foot. Let me check that. Fuck. Our next step is to go ahead, tighten these gut. Da fuck. <laughs> our next step is our uh, neck pep. God, oh my God, man. Did you just fucking die in your shirt? What the hell happened there? <laughs> you tried to hold back a sneeze. It sounded like he died. He's <laughs> All right. Anti seize the hell out of these bolts. Make sure now that there's no pressure or any sort and everything is nice and. Oh, damn, don't kick the fucking camera! Settle the fuck down, camera. 